Welcome friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm glad that you're able to make it to this place. Now, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, according to Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. Listen to me, I want you to listen uninterruptedly to the message I'm about to bring to you. God has given me a word for you and your life will never be the same again. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and don't forget to make comments. I would like to read your comments and don't forget to also subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification button to receive notification for new uploads of videos. Now listen to me, you are in for the best of time. God's word is going to come and change your life. Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, we are kings and priests. Everybody say we are kings and priests. Say, I am a king and a priest. Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. And made us kings. We didn't make ourselves. And made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. You see, if the Bible just said we shall reign, many of us will have thought that it's only, it's talking about heaven. If he just said we shall reign, I did not mention where the reigning will start from. Many of us will just assume and conclude that our reign is heaven. But the Bible says we shall reign on the earth. Everybody say, I'm a king and a priest. And I shall reign on the earth. Be confident and be comfortable to say I shall reign on the earth. Be confident, be comfortable to say I shall reign on the earth. Kings reign. Is that not so? Kings reign. So and if you are king, it is expected that you reign on the earth. Priests, too, also reign. Although they are not, uh, in the Old Testament, they reign in the, they don't reign in the secular world per se, but some of them, they are reigning extends to the secular world. In the Bible days, it is prophets that appoint king. Can you imagine the whole of Israel waited on God, and God spoke to Samuel that the next king is the son of uh, uh, Jesse, David. And everybody said, everybody agreed because they knew that God had spoken to Samuel. That's how powerful people of God are in the Bible days. One person elected the next king. It's not a committee of people. Only Samuel. Only Samuel had God. And they believed he had God. And they all followed, followed him because he said he had God. Praise the name of the Lord. So, as children of God, we are under the new, I've said this over and over again, in the Old Testament, you cannot be a king and be a priest at the same time. You cannot be a priest and be a king. You have to be one. But under the new covenant, the Bible says we are kings and we are priests. And you see, what that simply means is that when you go to the secular world, we are there, reigning. When you come to the sacred world, we are also there. So your, your reigning is, is extensive. It's beyond the four walls of the church. As a matter of fact, under the new covenant, if you're reigning only within the four walls of the church, you are limiting yourself because you've been called to be, you've been made, sorry, you've been made king and you have been made priest. Hallelujah. And you agree with me that kings are made. Kings are not born. Eagles are made, eagles are not born. It is eaglets that are born. When an eagle arch a head, what you have is not an eagle. It's an eaglet. A baby eaglet, very fragile. It would take the eagle to feed the eaglet to become like him. In fact, Looking like him is not enough. He must be able to do what the eagle does before he can be declared eagle. So, the eagle, the eagle, eagle mother feeds the baby eagle, the, sorry, the eaglet, until the, it's grown up. Then one day she comes and tear the nest apart. The nest she built for her, tear it with her, apart with her mouth and take her on a journey, the eagle's flight. Take her to about 50,000 feet above the sea level. Very few aeroplanes get to that height. Amen. 50,000 feet above the sea level. The mother eagle will take the eaglet eagle for the first time on a flight. And it would not take him to 10,000 feet or 5,000 feet. It would, she would take her to where? 50,000. That's scary. 
And when he gets to the 50,000 feet, he will drop her. Drop her. Some will say to die. So that she too can become an eagle. Because eagles are not born. Eagles are made. The process of the making of eagle is not an easy process. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not an easy process. So he drops this baby, uh, this eaglet, 50,000 feet above the sea level. Although stay not too far from him, from her. And the big eaglet is saying, Mommy, you are crazy this morning. What did you drink? <laughs> what, did you, what did you drink that makes you do this to me? She will struggle with her fragile wings and be crying and be shouting. When she's about to eat the floor, the mother will show up and take her again. And take her again to 50 feet, 1,000 feet. Drop her again. The process will be repeated several times until when she drops her and she took her, she can, until when she drops her and she discovered that. So this tiny flexible thing that I have, one on the left, one on the right, so it's actually meant for flying. While she's struggling in the sky, in the air, she discovered that. Some of you are asking God, how come I'm going through so much? You want to be a king and a priest, you'll be made. He made us. That's what he said. He said, and he has made us. Look at that scripture again. God has made us. It's a making. And the making of an eagle is not easy. The making of a king is not easy. Even in the Yoruba traditional, in the Yoruba land, I don't know of now that uh, it's politicians that, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But in the original traditional tradition of the Yorubas, and I'm sure the, the Eastern people too, the process of becoming a king is not easy. They scrape their head. They do, I don't want to say, I don't know everything they do, but they do all kinds of things that are scary. Hallelujah. God said, the Bible says God has made you. So it's not just a day job, it's a process. It's a process. You did, you've done some few business, you lost money. Don't give up on business. Because you lost money. It's part of the process. You went for all kinds of certification just to become somebody. It's not working. They are not promoting you. You are not making a headway. Don't give up on yourself. It's a process. You were fired. Don't give up on your career. It's a process. You were not treated like you expected to be treated. It's the process of the making of a king. If God is going to make you you know when Jesus met his disciples, some of them were fishermen. He said, follow me and I will, what? Make you. It's a making. And I will make you fishers of men. The process of your making, of our making, is not an easy process. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something about, about it. It's a season. There is a season when the eagle is being made. When the eagle, sorry, is being made to become an eagle. But you know there is a season when the eagle becomes independent. Build his own nest. Find his own food. Fly his own flight. Do his own thing. Sweatlessly. Life is in season. The season of making is not an easy season. And the season of the making of our making is not the same. It may take a longer time for some. It may take a shorter time for some. But you see, God who is the maker, he knows what he's doing. You can't teach him his job. Have you made a king before? Have you made a king and a priest before at the same time? So, allow him make you. Say, Lord, make me. Submit yourself to the maker. Submit your life to the maker. Trust the maker. Trust the what? Trust the maker. Sometimes when the maker seems to be doing what doesn't look correct to five senses, trust him that everything is to your own, for your own interest. When the mother drops the eaglet and the eaglet thinks the mother is crazy and the eaglet thinks the mother is not doing the right thing and the eaglet is mad, maybe even cursing the mother, the eaglet doesn't know that everything the mother is doing is for his own interest. Everything God has taken your life through is for your interest. If you look, there are places you pass through you don't like. 
You're passing through it because of where God is taking you to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our stories can never be the same. We can never go through the same thing. It's of, it's of different shapes and sizes. But everyone is going through a process of making. God, and what God is making out of you is the best. Follow me. You've been fishing for fish. And I will make you, what? Fishers of men. So God says, follow me. I will make you a king and a priest. Please, the process of the making is not five for life. It's not. You know, when the mother of Zebedee went to Jesus, the mother of some of the disciples of Jesus, you know, you know mothers like to lobby for their children a lot. Amen. And she said, Jesus, I like what you are doing with our children. These, are our, these 12 disciples, among them are my two children. I like what you are doing with them. But please, put, when you get to your paradise, when you put one on your right, put the second son on your left. The remaining 10, they can sit wherever they like. Every mother will do that. <laughs> Most mothers will do that. But you know what happened? Jesus said, that's not a problem. You want them to be made my right hand guys? They must be ready to drink from the same cup that I drink. Abby, you remember that story now? He said they must be ready to drink from the same, not the cup of Elijah or Elisha, the cup that I drink from. They must be ready to drink. And you know that what is inside that cup is not fight for life. When they put it in Jesus' mouth, he, you know, you know some things you, you put your mind, you, you, your, no matter how good your face looks, your face will go ugly. Abi, that's exactly what it is. The making of your king. You pass through situations and circumstances that you don't like. But where you are going, you will like it. The destination will be glorious. And you won't miss your destination. Some of us are already getting closer to our what God, we're already, you know, when, when, a, when an artist is drawing, if you've ever seen the making of a beautiful uh, portrait, at the beginning, you lost, almost want to slap the artist and say, what are you drawing? Because it will look like what you expect. Am I correct? To look ugly, to look scattered. But by the time the artist is true, we say, wow. Some of you, I mean, some of those artists, it's not when they finish ex at the end of it that people start admiring. It's when they get close. You know, there is a point the painting will get to. Everybody starts saying, okay, wow, wow. Now, it's not true yet, but it's beginning to look like it. There are some of us that are in that state where it's beginning to look like it. It will look like it. You will get there. You miss your destination. I say you will not miss your destination. It, you will get there. You will get to that season where there will not be no struggle. There will be no pain. You get to that season where you lack nothing. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. You are not saying amen because you don't. I say nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Some of us are not close to when it's looking like it. You are still far. It's still not looking at, like it at all. The pain are so many. Ladies and gentlemen, weeping men endure till night. Joy comes in the morning. Life is in season. God promised to make you a king and a priest. He wants you to reign both in the circular and the sacred world. But ladies and gentlemen, the journey will not be easy. The making will not be easy. But you have to be, you have to endure. The Bible says we should endure hardship. We don't quote those scriptures all the time again. In Timothy, Paul was advising Timothy as a man of God that has already been made. And he said, Timothy, you will endure some hardship like a military person. Have you seen when they tell you general, this man is a general with five with three stars on each shoulder? Three, three stars. Mm -hmm. If that man remove his uniform, you will see scars. Scars of war. Except in some place. Look, IBB can show you scars for being a general. He's living with a scar. Abby? But 
what that scar made him, it made him our president for how many years? For eight years. He ruled. Abby. Now, that is in the natural world. All your scars are not for nothing. Oh, I wish somebody. All the scars, we all have scars. Inju injuries we sustained in our process of trying to become the king and the priest God has made us. All those scars are working for your good. Don't think you are the only one with scars. I don't know why I'm dwelling more here. Don't ever think. Because the devil will want you to think you are the only one with scars. Nobody with scars. Look at that brother. Look at that sister. Look at that business. Look at that company. Nobody, you, don't, you think that you are the only one, your company is the only one with scars. Ladies and gentlemen, all generals have scars. And I pray that some of you, you are going to reign as a general. In your industry, you will reign as king and priest. In your field, you will reign as king and priest. When they mention top people in your industry, without you struggling, your name will surface. Your name will surface. But all you need to do is, please don't give up in the process. Don't give up in the process. What the devil wants you to do is to give up. Me, Shema, I'm not doing it again. That's the language of failures. Amen. You have not failed until you give up. Failure is not a person. Failure is an event. So you are not a failure. Everybody say, I'm not a failure. Say it until you mean it. Say it like you mean it. You must stop seeing yourself as a failure because of an event. Because something didn't work. Because you lost some money. Because your business is not working yet. Don't consider yourself a failure. Because God did not have any failure as a child. There's no child of God that is a failure. Yeah, you failed. There's no doubt about it. Every general has failed before. I've told you over and over again. Successful people are ex-failures. Successful people are those who have failed. And failed. And failed. And failed, and failed, and failed, and failed until they gain mastery and succeed. So how did they gain mastery? They gain mastery because they failed and they refused to give up. And failed and they refused to give up. And failed and they refused to give up. They were knocked down, they refused to take the knockdown as a knockout. They were knocked down. The referee was counting one to ten. Before they count to ten, they got up. The referee asked them, do you still want to continue? They said, I want to continue. Ah. Have you not watched some boxing or wrestling match where the guy you thought will lose, they've beaten hell out of him. It does not look like that guy can make it again. He is struggling to stand up. But eventually, <laughs> let me say eventually, Eventually, his opponent miscalculated. And he struggled to throw one jab. And the jab meet the opponent where <laughs> it would take God to survive. And the guy went down for the first time and refused to get up. They counted 10, the guy was still on the floor. And this weakling that we thought we failed is now the one declared champion. Somebody is here this morning. You've fallen down several times. You've failed several times. You've been knocked down several times. But I come here this morning to prophesy over your life. You are getting up again. As you get, look, you are getting up to stand up and never to fall again. This guy who is weakling now, just with the little energy he has. He said, I want to continue. And just God just opened a window. Let's assume he had given up before that window came. There are several people like that in the church. Before that time, that season of harvest will come. They have thrown in the towel. They said, look, I don't want pride. Well, this wallah is too much for me. And you want to be, and you, are, you, you, and you know, and you are saying you are made a king. You are made a priest. And you think it will be easy. I like that song we used to sing. Nobody told me. Is that how they sing it? Nobody 
Please take it again huh? because I'm, it's a long time. No. That song says, Nobody told me the road would be easy. Abby? And I, I don't believe that after all I've gone through, it brought me this far. God will not bring me this far and leave me. Then if he leaves me, then God has failed. Yes, that's what it means. It means he has invested in wrong projects. This project called David Adeoye is a project that is destined to succeed. You don't know you are a project in the hand of God? You are a project. God is mindful of you. And if, you, if everything stops here and you did not make it to the top, God has wasted those resources. He has wasted time. He has wasted energy. Because you are God's project. You are a project in the hand of God. I, I like that. So he said, I, I, I believe. Sorry, I don't believe you will bring me this far to leave me. Me too, I don't believe. God will bring me this far and leave me. You, today you are doing all. You are standing up to responsibility. You are the accountant. You are the secretary. You are the PR. You are the cleaner. You are the everything. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a season. One of the things I've come to realize in life is that the successful people are those who can hold on. Receive grace to hold on. Grace to tarry, receive it. Grace to wait, receive it. What I've come to, I've come to realize is that no matter how the struggle is, it started one day, it will end one day. So who wins is who can stand the test of time. Hallelujah. The global com test, uh, story we are reading today, the first time he applied, he lost his money. They didn't give him the license. They did not give him the license. Maybe the government of the day doesn't like his face or something. He lost hundreds of millions of naira, according to the story we read. The man bounced back, looked for money again. When there was another window, because he was still in the game, I would say I remain in the game. He could seize the opportunity. Then, the favor of the government of the day was, in his favor, was in his, on his side. He was given not just a license, but a special one. I think he's the one that ran cable, underground cable, from, from Europe to Nigeria. Marine cable. This cable they said caught the other time. He was the one that ran that cable. So all other network in Nigeria depend on the man who came last. He said the first shall be what? And the last will come what? He's talking about you. He's, look, he's talking about me. That you have been last before, but you become first. Shout a big, big hey, man. You're not saying amen properly. You know, one of my pastors, uh, protege, he was leaving this country for, he was relocating. And his plan was to start a church. So he came to see me to tell me and I advised him. I said, you know what? I said, I know you. I know you. Because that's how all of Nigerians, all of us, we think. Once you get there like this, you just plant church. And they start calling you Geo. I said, I said, don't do it like that. I said, number one, that country is a totally new country to you. How do you minister to people you don't know? I said, so be patient to understand the environment you are. Then I linked him with an organization that I have gone through their training. They are powerful trainers when it comes to church planting. And I wish, I've tried to bring them to Nigeria, but they said they are not coming to Africa yet. I've seen churches they planted all over America, more than 2,000 churches in America, in Europe, 
and I've seen how vibrant I've, I've read, I've gone through their training, I've seen their DNA. Their DNA is in their teaching, the kind of training they give. And I like the kind of package they have because you, 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 they will train you to allow God to grow the church. You understand? They will help you minimize your ownership mentality. My church, my church. No, they will help you. So that the real owner of the church says, I will build my church. So that's the kind of package they have. So I told him, I said, but if you submit to this organization, you can't plant when you want to plant. Oh. You go through all their trainings. It's very long. It's demanding. People will think you are stupid. That are lot of doing, lot of joy. You know, some people, are, some people push you until you fail. They are failures too. I said, but if you just listen to this and follow through, I said, you'll be proud you did. It will take longer time, but you'll be proud you did. And thank God, this young man, very patient, he just did exactly that. Got there, joined them, started attending all their conferences, their trainings, you know, and he grew. And just last Sunday, just last Sunday, after more than two years of rigorous training, he launched his church, I mean, their church, with over 200 people in a foreign land. <laughs> and not blacks alone, half were white. I told him, I said, look, these guys will help you, train you so that you can build a multi-cultural, multi-racial, multi-nationality church. Pastor Shea, he is going through the same training. That's why you see, that it looks like we are slow. He's still in training. Last week he was in a conference. It's what they will train you, train your wife. But Nigerians don't like those kind of things. Which is slow. Say, so which one do you want? Sharp, sharp. You understand? Say, no, ah, Kilode, what are we doing that? Thing? Let me tell you, if that guy planted that church two years ago, they can't be 200 now. I know churches in America and Europe that for 30 years, they are no more than 30. <laughs> for 30 years. They are no more than 30. I'm serious. I'm not mocking them. I'm just sharing with you. God, but they are happy. The first service, over 200 people. In Canada. The first service. The process looks longer, but is it not better? Look, if you know the product you are, you, are, you will submit to the process. Why you are struggling with the process is that you don't have an understanding of the value of your product. That's why you are rushing, rushing, rushing. Microwave oval kind of things. You don't understand. You are a king and a priest. That's the product. The bigger, the, the, the more valuable the product, the longer the process, the rigorous the process. Abby? The product the exam they do in kindergarten. You cannot compare it to the one they do in PhD. You cannot. The one in kindergarten is to produce a kindergarten graduate. The one they are doing in PhD is to produce a PhD holder. It cannot be the same. Stop running for hardship. Stop running for processes. Stop jumping processes. Because let me tell you what jumping processes do. Look, this is not what I plan to preach. Although this is just the A part of my message. The B part I'm not there at all. I, something is telling me I should talk more about it. Stop jumping processes because you'll be wasting energy and strength. I'm serious. Hallelujah. They ask these two people, if they give you 10 days, sorry, 10 hours to cut down a tree, and they give you a blunt axe. How many hours will you spend to sharpen the axe? How many hours will you spend to cut down the tree? Listen attentively. They give two people ten hours. Or let's say five hours. Ten is too much. To cut down a tree. And they give each, they give each one of them blunt axe. Axe that is not sharp. That is blunt. And they told you that this axe is not sharp. You are not trained yet to... Spend time to sharpen the hacks. Spend time to cut down the hacks. A foolish person will say he will sharpen the hacks in 30 minutes. 
we cut down the tree in four and a half hours. A wise person will say, you will sharpen the axe in four and a half hours. You will cut down the tree in 30 minutes. Now, when they are true, somebody will have been totally exhausted. They, all, they, may, all, they may all cut down the tree. But if you see somebody, it won't look like human being again. <laughs> because of exhaustion. Why? He did not spend quality time and energy on what matters, on process. Because he too wants to, ah, I want to reign. Become king before you reign. So that you won't be struggling with another king. David was anointed king in 1 Samuel 16. Remember? That was when he was, did he really become a king in actual sense? The same verse? The next chapter verse? He did not. It took several chapters away before he, in fact, before he became king of one of the one, 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 twelve, one out of 12 tribes. He became king over just one. Then later, another one. Process. Everybody say process. Say, Lord, I trust you enough. And I submit myself to the process. In the process, you will serve. In the process, you volunteer. In the process, you will learn. And you, learning is not going to be just reading. You will learn by working with other people, serving under other people, volunteering. Then you will learn by bowing down to study. In the process, you will serve. Everybody say, I will serve. Jesus taught his disciples very profound thing in John chapter 13. The Bible says he took his garment aside. John chapter 13, verse 4 to 6, and verse 14 to 17. He put his garment aside and, and guided himself with a towel and bent down and washed the disciples' feet. And when it was true, he, said, he, said, he rose from the supper, he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wiped them with towel which he was guided. So he, he, had, he had told, verse 6, then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, no, you wash me. Let's go to 14 to 17. Jump to 14. Jump to verse 14 to 17. Jump to 14. John 13, 14. We'll read to 17. Can we have it? John 13. If you see it, you can please help me because of time. John 13, 14. Then, sorry, if I then, your Lord... And teacher, he said, if I am your Lord and your teacher and I could wash your feet, you also ought to what? He said, just follow my example. Then verse, verse 15. For I have given you what? An example that you should do as I have done to you. Verse uh, 16. Most assuredly I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is, who he, he, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Verse 17, the last one. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. If you know this principle, you are blessed, not for knowing it, but for doing it. One of the principles he taught them was that, look, no matter the level you are, you must learn to go through that process. It takes a lot of humility to serve. It takes a lot of humility, but in service, we learn. In service, we what? I know many people in this church that it was in service for what they are doing today corporately, what they are doing in their area of business Monday to Friday now is what they learned in church. I know a lot of people in this church. The church is like a school sometimes. And God brings us together so we can learn. And listen to me, there is nobody in this auditorium, whether you are watching online, you're not physically here, but you are here online, or you are here on site. God has a big plan for you. The big plan is that God wants to make you a king and make you a priest. But the process of the making, you have to submit yourself to him. And say, Lord, have your way. Do what only you can do. Amen. Amen. Our church, when God directs us to start a, a new work, I will make sure myself and my wife will go there personally, not just send people. And go in that, like the service we did yesterday, I was an usher. 
I was, uh, my wife was uh, in Russia. We were protocol. We were everything. You have to, you see, that understanding, don't be, you know, some, the, mother of, the mother of Zebedee doesn't understand. You don't say, let, I want my two sons, one to sit on your right. They, they, they dash people. The mother of Zebedee doesn't understand. And that's how many of us are. We just like, you know, everybody likes it. But the, there's a process. If all mothers, two of the remaining ten are invited, they too will say the same thing. It's a process. And can I tell you something? When you meet people that are doing well in their choosing field, they've gone through process. If they open their mouth and tell you their story, you'll be shocked. Most times, we don't know people's story. We only hear of their glory. But when people are given opportunity to share that story, you'll be shocked. The story is not always palatable. At what they have gone through. How they have lost money. How they have lost business. How they have been humiliated. How they have spoken to them anyhow. Abby, can I have a witness? How things, how, how, how they work so hard on a project and they wash it out and say, Kilo, what did you do? And they did not run away. They didn't because of that say, I'm not doing it again. They stayed in the game. If you people open their mouth, you know there is a story behind every glory. The story is not always palatable. I pray for you, you won't give up. You will persevere. You will persevere. God will give you a staying power. As this word is coming, receive the staying power. That's ability to stay in the game till you win. Receive that power today. Your email is not loud at all. Receive that power today. Ability to stay in the game till you win. You and not give up on yourself. Receive that power today. In all areas of your life, you will reign. You will reign as kings and priests. You will reign as kings and priests. Where you are falling in time past, I declare you are getting up. Where it seems you are last, you become first. Where it seems you have lost, you will win. Where you have lost so much, God will restore you. In the game where others are giving up, I declare as you stay, and refuse to give up. As you stay, I declare, you will win. You know the difference between, this thing just, I just, you know the difference between a steel and an iron? The raw iron, if you see it when they mine iron, it's very rough. Nobody likes it. Because it comes with a lot of impurities. So they will subject it to fire. And bring it out and it become iron. Something you, you know how you're now, we're all looking how you're. I'm looking for one, you know. Like uh, the pole of that, uh, something like that. Aha, uh -huh. the stand. But do you know that steel, that is shining more than higher, this is steel, even if it's not pure steel, but let's, this is how steel looks like. Because some people now, it is that one, they're analyzing their mind, they will not get the real wisdom we are trying to impart. Say, no, it's not steel. According to chemistry, this is not, we're not talking chemistry here. We're talking Bible here. We're just trying to describe. Amen. <laughs> Some people are analysts. They have, they, it's, a natural, it's, in, it's in their DNA. Out of this and that one, which one do you like? You prefer this? Because it's shiny, it's attractive. Which one is more expensive? Which one is more expensive? Is this? Steel is more expensive. Stainless steel. But you know that this is also made from iron. This is just iron that stayed longer inside fire. This one couldn't stay long. That's why it's like this. This one was kept there longer. You are crying every time. It's too long. It's too long. It's steel. You are made of a steel. And you are coming out shining. Oh, you are not getting what I'm saying. You are made of great value. High standard. There are people hearing this message this morning. That by the time God is through with you. You remember today. You will glorify your father in heaven. You are made of steel. You are not an iron. You are not. 
Oh, you may be coming from the same place, but God is working more on you because you're of greater value. Still is of greater value. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That pastor will have started a church that will have been like an iron. But he waited enough in the training. In the, now he's a steel. There is nowhere in the world a church will start in an environment with over 200 people and they will not know there is a church. So from day one, they hit the ground with a greater momentum. Somebody is here in the name that is above every name. You are stepping into your season of greater momentum. Greater speed. Greater speed. Greater speed. You are stepping into a season where you will do little, you will get much. Although you've been in that season where you are doing so much, you are getting little, you are, you'll be getting more than you could even bargain for. You are stepping into your season of harvest. Your shining season. Your shining season. This is a season where heaven will announce you. You get to some places, the doors will have been opened before you could get there. In the name of Jesus. You, you have been called last before. You are getting to that season where you will be called first. I said where you will be called first. Receive a staying power. You will dominate your industry. It will look like in your industry you are the only one that is there. You are not saying amen at all. You become the talk of the town. You become an household name. In your office, you'll be the head and not the tail. In your school, you'll be the head and not the tail. In your field, you'll be the head and not the tail. You are taking over the front line. You are dominating the front line. You are dominating the front line. For everything you have lost in time past to several businesses, several attempts, God will bring them back in sevenfold. God is bringing back all that you have lost to the enemy. You bring back the time you lost. You bring back the money you lost. You bring back the relationship you lost. You bring back the relationship you lost. After this meeting, kings will invite you. After this meeting, at the topmost top, I said kings will invite you. I was speaking to our Abuja brethren yesterday in our meet and greet, and I told them that, look, there is... We may start from stewardship. Our destination is ownership. Abi, that's our heritage. He said, the heart is the Lord. Our father owns everything. Your father owns everything. I want you to leave this church, this service this morning with the mentality. Your father owns, or is God not your father? Your, your, this God we're talking about is your father. It's more of your father than your biological father. Your biological father is a, is a caretaker. My biological father is a caretaker. He didn't make me. God made me. The maker of your destiny owns the land, owns the resources, owns the people. I told us a few weeks ago, he's called the Lord of what? That's his name. The Lord of what? Lords. And I told you the meaning of Lord. Lord means what? Owner. So we can say the owner of owners. God owns all owners. Landlords are landowners. Lord is owner. So God owns the landlord and owns his land. You don't know what I'm talking about. And if your father owns that much, you will reign in this world. If your daddy owns that much in this world, you will reign in this world. I stand upon the authority in the word of God and I declare, you are walking out of this environment to begin to own. Everywhere you step the sole of your foot, you will hold it. Amen. You will grab it. Amen. You will dominate it. Amen. You will take it. Amen. Your territory will be extended beyond the shores of this country. Amen. Your territory will be extended beyond the shores of Agege. Your territory will be extended beyond the shores of this country. Amen. In far places, God will announce you. In far places, God will announce you. Amen. You are selling ordinary amala. You are amala. will be known worldwide. Amen. You are just an artist. They call you ordinary artist. Your ordinary artist will be known everywhere in the world. Amen. They say you are just a teacher. You're just being a teacher. We announce you all over the world. 
I have an uncle who teaches mathematics. My elder brother is here, he can testify. He's a mathematics teacher. He studied mathematics from uh, the whole Russia in the USSR. He speaks their language. He came back home like 30 something or 40 years ago with a PhD in mathematics. I didn't know that to teach mathematics, you can become great. But as a little boy growing up, I saw him, I saw greatness in his life. As far back as 30 something years ago, he travels more than someone that is selling an aeroplane. He's always traveling. So one day we ask him, you always like, he, he goes to teach mathematics in America, in Poland, in Europe. I said, what are you teaching in mathematics? That sometimes for one hour lecture, they'll pay for, and they always pay for, they'll pay for everything. That is, his ticket, everything, pay him some powerful thousands of dollars to go and teach mathematics for one hour. So one day I asked him, I said, what type of, ah, he said the type of mathematics he teaches, only few of them are in the world. He mentioned, I can't remember again, maybe applied mathematics, I can't remember, one part of, he said, there are few in the world. He said, so there, are, there is a particular part of it again that nobody takes it like him. This man is a professor today. He has been living large for long by teaching mathematics. You, you are the only one who thinks what you are doing is ordinary. It's not ordinary. It may be ordinary in some people's hands. In the hand of the child of God, the king of kings, is no longer ordinary. So I prophesy. That singular thing you are doing, I command. Angels will announce all over the world. Those your tiny, tiny effort will take you to the biggest places of the world. I decree and I declare, Forward ever, backward never. Amen. You will not be small. Amen. You will not be small. Amen. You won't struggle, but you will not be small. Amen. By the authority in the word of God, in the word give in the word of in the word of God, by the authority in his word, I decree and declare whatever is trying to keep you small, I command that thing to fail. Amen. You be the voice in the land, Amen. you be in the forefront. Amen form of attack on your health to terminate this glory. That attack is terminated today. Any form of attack on your body to terminate that glory. I command that attack terminated today. Any form of attack against your marriage relationship, your family, to scatter the family, to distract you. That attack is scattered today. Whatever is distracting you from pursuing that glory, I command that thing distracted today. Amen. All the devil Satan is using to keep you distracted. Amen. If you don't hear your Bible, please just say amen. It's a good prayer. They'll be so distracted with activities they won't see you again. Anyone, anywhere in the world that says they want to see you dead, I stand today upon the authority in the word of God. Because they have imagined a venting against God's child, I decree they will become victim of their invalidation. They will dig pit for you, they will fall in the pit themselves. I don't know why we are getting to this dimension. I said they will dig pit for you. Though the hands that dig it will jump into the pit themselves. I command confusion, distraction in the camp of your adversaries. I command confusion, distractions in the camp of your adversaries. They will gather together successfully, but they will not be able to execute their ventures. Their executions will fail. Their weapons will fail. Their imaginations will fail. Now, this is very prophetic. We didn't plan to go into this dimension. But before the end of this year, the news they will hear, they will make them cry about you. Because there are some good news they need to hear. One bishop told me many years ago, he said the greatest punishment for your enemy 
is your success story. Huh? Your success story is the greatest punishment. That's why he prepares a table before you. You know how painful it can be for you. They say cannot be able, you will not be able to eat. You are, now, you are now furnished with a big table. They are hungry, they can't touch the table. They are smelling the food, they can't touch it. And you are eating in their front. I prophesy that this year, God is going to prepare a flourishing table. A flourishing table before you. That will prove you serve a living God. A flourishing table before you. Raise up your right hand wherever you are. So sorry, we'll take, take up your... Put that right hand, I command. The anointing on this mountain. Upon those hands, in the name of Jesus. Put that hand on your forehead. All eyes are closed, all legs are bowed. I make a mark of safety upon you from today. Galatians 6, 17 says, Henceforth, let no man trouble me. In my body, I bear the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. On your body this morning, I make the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere you enter with this mark, the devil around that place will flee from you. Everywhere you carry this mark, your opportunities will attract to yourself. Everywhere this mark that is on your forehead today gets to, I decree in the name of Jesus, heaven will stand by you. You will attract favor. No evil will befall you. No plague will close your dwelling place. With your hands still on your head, some of you are here, the devil has been planting some thoughts in your heart. The devil kept planting the thought of death in your heart. It is the people fashioning your death that will be victims of their fashions. No weapon fashioned against you shall be able to prosper. The fear of death in your mind, I cast it out. For we have not received the spirit of fear, but of sound mind. I cast out the spirit of fear. Long life is before you. When your children are doing great things, you'll be there. When your grandchildren are doing great things, you'll be there. When your great-grandchildren are doing great things, you'll be there. The days of your honor and glory, you will witness it. They won't do five minutes silence because of you. In the name of Jesus. Every days of glory that is ahead of you, you will witness it. You will witness it. You will witness it. You know, for parents, the kind of money parents spend on children, it is so unjust for parents not to wait to eat. When we pay school fees every September, I used to remember that even me, their father, how much did I spend to go to school? From my kindergarten to university, how much did I pay? The figure we pay for one child now, uh, uh, even my father as a banker, how much was his salary from January to December? That you now pack that kind of money to go and be paying school fees. And some of us are paying for six children, five children, four children, and somebody is saying you will not wait to hit. Uh, uh. Is it not wickedness? Anyone that imagine termination of your life, I command you will be victim of their own work. In the days of your glory, you will be there. Wave your hands and give him praise. Give him glory and honor. Thank him. In Jesus' precious name we pray. All eyes closed, all eyes bowed. Take a step forward. I decree and declare, after this service, it is forward ever. You won't go back anymore. Amen. Those who think back is your position in the name of Jesus, they won't see you there. Amen. Forward ever, backward never. Amen. That step you took forward this morning is a prophetic step. Amen. So I decree everything connected to you, your business, your family, your children, your, 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 your career, everything, your ministry, they keep moving forward. Amen. So shall it be.
In Jesus' precious name we pray. Wow, what a great word from heaven. What a word. Now, one thing I know that I'm assured and I know is that God will always confirm his words. I declare and I decree. Every word that has been spoken in your direction will find fulfillment in your life. I declare in the name of Jesus for those who might be sick in the body, receive healing in your body. Receive healings in your bone. Receive healing in your, in your blood. Everywhere sickness might be hiding in your body. The Bible says as soon as a stranger hears my voice, they will run out of their hidden place. Every disease and sickness in your body, I command them out in the name of Jesus. I declare God's blessings over your life. If you desire a divine intervention in one area of your life, maybe your marriage, your relationship, your finance, I declare that God will step into your case and turn things around for your good. God bless you. Don't forget, like this video, share it with your friends and family, make comments. I want to read your comments. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'll be back again with another very powerful message. God bless you.